introduction to data structures what is a data a data is a collection of numbers alphabets and symbols uh, combined to represent information so it is a collection of numbers alphabets and symbols uh, which are combined to give certain information uh. a computer takes the raw data as input so the input which is taken is in the form of raw data and the output which is given out after processing the data is a refined output so the refined data is obtained as the output atomic data are non decomposable entities so what are atomic data atomic data are non decomposable entities for example integer value 523 or a character value a if we further divide 523 then what will happen so what are atomic data they are non decomposable data if you divide 523 into 3 parts then it loses its meaning so you cannot divide the atomic data as a composite data if a composition it is a composition of several atomic data as hence it can be further divided into the atomic data as for example the date of birth date of birth is a composite data it can be divided into 15 15 is the day 3 is the month and 1984 is the year so it can be separated into the three atomic values first one gives the day of the month the second one gives the month and the last one gives the year so data types data types is a type of data that a variable may hold in a programming language example int x so x is what x is a integer data type every programming language has a method for declaring a set of variables of a particular type the value stored in the variable cannot be interrupted properly without knowing its type so you cannot interpret whether it is an integer whether it is a character whether it is a float without knowing the data which it which it is storing whether it is storing integer data whether it is storing a float data or a character data a byte of information in a computer may represent so byte when represent a integer value it can represent a character value or boolean value or a bcd value therefore it is necessary that the value stored in the memory must be treated as a particular type and interpreted accordingly so the value which is stored should be of a particular type it can be either a integer value it can be either a character value or bcd value or a boolean value next is the abstract data type an abstract data type is a way we look at the data structure focusing on what it does and ignoring on how it does so we should only focus on what it is doing while ignoring that how it is doing its job we are only concerned that work is happening so how is the work happening we are not concerned about that for example stacks and queues a perfect examples of abstract data type we can implement both the entities using a array as well as you can implement it using a linked list this demonstrate that abstract nature of stacks and queues so you can implement a stack and a queue with the help of a linked list you can also implement it with the help of a array so your job is done you have implemented now how it is allowing you we are not concerned how it is doing its job we are not concerned we are only concerned that whether our job is happening or not what it does ignoring how it is doing it this demonstrates the abstract nature of stacks and queues now data type of a variable is a set of values what is a data type of a variable is a set of values that the variable can take up we have already read the basic data types in c so what is a data type a data type is a set of values that a variable can take so we have already read about the different data types that is in char float and double when we take Uh, when we talk about a primitive type we actually consider the characteristics and the permissible operations on that data so when we talk about a, a primitive data type what are we considering we are considering about the characteristics 
and the operations which can be performed so we are considering two things one is the characteristics and another one is the operations which can be performed on that data example a variable can take a whole number value from minus 3268 to 32767 and can operate for so it can take the value between the range of minus 3268 to 32768 and it can take plus minus into an multiplication in other words operations can be performed on data type and are inseparable part of the the identity therefore whenever we declare a variable of an abstract data type uh, we also have to specify what kind of operation we want to perform uh. now what is abstract uh? a word abstract in context of the data structures means considered apart from the detailed specifications or implementations in c an abstract data type can be a structure considered with without regard of its implementation so again we are not considered about how it is getting implemented or detailed specifications we are only concerned about what it is doing and not about how it is getting implemented how it is doing its job how it is getting implemented we are not concerned about that so we don't give it any regards it can be thought as a description of a data structure with a list of operations that can be performed on the data within that structure so it also gives you the list of operations which you can perform on that data within that structure the end user is not concerned about the details of how the method carry out their task so again it is not concerned about the implementations not concerned about the specifications not concerned about how the method is carrying out its task carrying out its job they are only aware of the methods which are available to them and are concerned only about calling those methods and getting results so what are they concerned about they are concerned whether their job is happening or no if their job is happening well and good so user job should happen but it is not concerned about how the compiler is performing the job not concerned about how compiler is doing its job so it is not concerned about how the methods are formed and all it is only concerned about what are the available methods and by calling these methods will my job get over will i get the result they are not considered about how they work how these methods work not bothered how they work means how these methods are working so not bothered about how the methods are working for example when we use a stack and a queue the user is concerned with only the type of operation that can be performed on it so the user is concerned about what kind of operation can be performed on it therefore fundamentals of how a data is stored should be invisible to the user they should not be concerned with how the methods work or what structures are used to store the data so they are not concerned about how the methods are working what are the structures used to store the data no they should just know which method they have to use have to work with for example if it is stack then they should know that they have to work with the method function push and pop but they are not it's not needed to know how are the push and pop implemented by the compiler using these functions they can manipulate the data stored in the stack now types of data structures primitive data structures the integer real logical data character data pointers and reference are primitive data structures so integer real logical data character data pointers and references are primitive data structures 
The data types are available in most programming language as in built-in type. Data objects of the primitive data types can be operated by machine level instructions. What are non-primitive data types? These data types are derived from the primitive data types. A set of homogeneous and heterogeneous data elements are stored together. Example, array, structure and union, link list, tag, queues, trees and graph. Some of the most common operations can be performed on the data structures. So what are the common operations? Traversing, deleting, these are the common operations. Insertion. So these can be performed on the non-primitive data structures. And what are the non-primitive data structures? Array, structure and union, link list, tag, queues, trees and graphs. Linear data structures. Elements are arranged in a linear fashion uh, that is in one dimension and there is one to one relation can be handled through the linear data structures. So what are the examples? Link list, tags, queues are the examples of the linear data structure. So there is a one to one relation which can be handled and they are arranged in a linear fashion. Uh. So representation using an array and then we have representation using a linked list. Next is non-linear data structures. So non-linear data structures have one to many, one to many as in trees. If you consider this five, this is one element and this is connected with one and nine. Further, they are connected with 2 and 3. So, this is 1 to many relation. Then you have many to 1. Now, if you consider these, these are many. And where are they merging? They are merging, meeting with this. So, this is 1. Sorry, many to 1. Many to 1. And it can also be many to many. So representation as linked list is concerned, there is a root element. Representation through an array. First will be number of elements. Second will be the root element, left child, right child. We'll do about the representation in the later part. This is also representation. Even non-linear data structure representation. Now static in case of static data structures, memory for the object is allocated at the time of loading of the program. So you have to allocate the memory before the program is loaded. So it is allocated at the time of loading of the program. Amount of memory required is determined by the compiler during the compilation. Example is int A of 50. Memory for an array A of 50 elements will be allocated at the time of loading of the programmer. It may be possible to fix the size of the array in advance. So in the advance only you can give the size of the array as 50. So amount of data to be handled is often determined by the user. So you have given it as A50 int A50. So who is determining the memory space? The memory space is being determined by the user over here and not by the programmer. Our initial judgment of size is wrong will cause a failure or a wastage of memory. So if the initial judgment of size is wrong, then it will cause a wastage of memory. Static data structures called utilization of memory in case of over allocation. In case you want, you know that you will only require these many bytes, then you don't need excess memory. You don't want to waste this memory space in that case static data structure is used so that the memory can be utilized effectively they static data structures may cause overflow under allocation so if you have allocated int a 50 but if there are 100 elements which you want to store now then it can cause overflow no you reusability of the allotted memory and difficulty to guess the exact size of the data at the time of writing a 
program so pre before writing the program it is difficult to visualize how much data will be required for storing a particular thing dynamic in case of dynamic data structures the memory space required by the variables is calculated and allocated during the execution dynamic memory is managed in c through a set of library functions uh, allocating a memory block how will you allocate ptr that is a point ptr is a pointer equal to cast type malloc memory allocation malloc stands for memory allocation and then you have byte size so the malloc returns a pointer of cast type to the size byte size example int pointer malloc 100 pointer size of int so linear data structures can be represented can be implemented either through static or dynamic data structure static data structure is preferred all linked structures are preferably implemented through dynamic data structures so linked list is implemented through dynamic data structures whatever structures the linked data structures are implemented through dynamic uh, dynamic data structure provide flexibility in adding deleting or rearranging data objects uh, at the runtime so it gives you the flexibility you can add the element you can delete the element uh, why it gives you the flexibility because the memory is allocated during the time of execution and not prior as in case of static dynamic data structures they provide flexibility in adding deleting or rearranging the data elements at the runtime uh, additional space can be allocated at the runtime unwanted space can be released at the runtime and it gives reusability of the memory space uh, so memory space can be reused again and again which was not possible in case of static data structure uh, what are the different operations traversing a data structure is accessing each data and it is accessing the data only once so you are accessing each data element you are traversing the whole data structure that is you are traversing suppose say a linked list you are accessing each element of the linked list searching is finding the location of the data structure within the given data structure so finding the location of the data within the given data structure inserting is adding a new data in the data structure deleting is removing a data from the data structure sorting is arranging the data in some logical order you can have linear sort you can have a binary sort okay so you can linearly you can linearly sort it you, or you can sort it in a systematic way merging is combining of two similar data structures so merging is combining of the two sim data similar data structures so it's not binary binary search is there and linear searching is there so in searching you have binary search and linear search whereas in sorting we don't have binary sorting or linear sorting we have quick sort we have what we have quick sorter we also have bubble sorting which is done with the help of a array we also have merge sorter sorting is arranging in a logical order and merging is combining of two similar data structures